This is session one, part two. I feel, she said, I would use it as the key of hope to release the prisoner of fear. Mm. And that is so true, isn't mm. it? That faith in love is the thing that eventually unlocks us from fear and, and causes us to choose something different. Yes. Yeah. Like she says, fear, punishment and retribution I would hold in long restraint <laughs> <laughs> while I tried to charm each wanderer homeward as I sang the legitimate music his father composed to win him back from sin and misery to his rightful home and heritage. Yeah. It's sort of like, and this is the problem we see as well, isn't it? That fear, punishment, retribution is the general theme that we notice in particular in terms of what's said to us from people who are, who are practising the Christian faith. Yeah. And, and not love. And in fact, it's like most of them have no understanding of love at all. And in particular, the ones who email us, yes, it no, seems we say they, we they are seem usually to. violent in their yeah. tendencies and nature. And so much so that they're willing to actually perpetrate violence and, and even wish for our death. Um, and this is an indication of how much fear, punishment and retribution they've imbibed inside of themselves and, and they believe this about God. They believe that they're actually doing God a favour mm -hmm. by threatening us with death. By threatening someone who's teaching about love with death. Yeah. <laughs> like yeah. that's and it's a, it's and an so in, in this regard they become an enemy of God's teachings. Yeah. Not 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 a person who supports them. No, yeah. exactly, exactly. And this this metaphor, she says that love is the legitimate music that God composed yes. to win us back from sin and misery. Yes. That I, it's just so full of poetic truth, mm. this chapter. Yeah. That, um, it's, it's very beautiful. Yes. Um, so it's a very good conversation I've had, really, because yes. it, it's about... Uh, what, what you call as theological doctrinal issues mm -hmm. are all sort of dispelled or put aside temporarily for the sake of seeing the more important issue of love. Yeah. And, and so it should be. Mm -hmm. um, theoretic, you know, theological and doctrinal issues should all be put aside yeah. when the more important issue of love come, uh, uh, needs to be brought to the fore. Yeah. And, and always, always emphasised. Yes. Um, and this is where I feel um, once the religions of the earth make that transition, then we have some hope for the future on earth then we have some hope to see changes on earth. Mm. Once we change this concept that we have from the fear-based, retribution-based, punishment-based God to a God who's only love and who wants us to demonstrate love ourselves and learn about love ourselves and learn what love is. And once we make this transition mm. from the, the theoretical man-based, man-created dogma and theological discussion into the God-based, love-based discussion, now we have some ability to progress. And this is something I feel a lot of uh, people who come to our seminars miss mm -hmm. because they often ask question after question after question about theoretical things or, or, or things about truth, yeah. but they miss practising love with each other while they're there. And quite often we see yeah. people come to our seminars and they ask all these questions. The seminars about love and all, and, and all mm -hmm. the aspects of truth, they come to the seminar and then the very next moment they treat the next person who's sitting right next to them without any love. Yeah. And they, they've missed the entire point of their entire future progression. Exactly. And, and this is and something we need to address. Yeah. Sorry, go ahead. Yeah. Good. Uh, that's something I often feel when I see people uh, questioning you quite insistently about issues regarding the spirit world or uh, one with God, or all these things. When even in this example, in this chapter, the poetess is saying to us, you can't really understand till you get there anyway. So mm. I'm not trying. Mm. I'm just working on the lessons of love that my father is bringing me right now. Well, the irony is the lessons of love is how you get there anyway. Which is the way, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Which is, I, which is the way that I'm actually going to come to know these things yes. in the future about my progression. And yes. that is the thing that... And maybe it's because we're fear-based and intellectually dominant on the earth, mm. but most people miss that in, they're in search of truth and facts when they're missing the point that if we grow in love and this relationship with God, all truth, all and, truth facts. and facts come to us, but 
they they can take hold in this fertile ground of love that we've developed mm. and the respect that this is born of that love within us that we have for our environment and everyone around us. Mm. Yeah. yeah. So I find, I find it a bit sad sometimes when we uh, finish up with our seminars, when we observe so much unloving behaviour going on. Yeah. There is little, you know, we don't control people, obviously, at our seminars or presentations, so it's up to them what they do. Yeah. But, but to, to see people, you know, treat other people so unlovingly, and yet these people have listened to the principles of divine truth for years. Yeah. They obviously have missed the lesson, the, mm. the main lesson, the primary lesson, which is it's all about growth in love. And we've talked about it so many times that it seems to go over people's head. It's like, yes, but, you know, you, 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 you talk, start talking about love and they go, yeah, I'm not interested in that. Yes, but I want to know about this, yes. you know, what happens when you die here and what happens when you go there and what spirit, why did the spirit say this yeah. and why did the spirit say that? What emotion is that? What emotion is that? Emotion is that? What emotion yeah. is this? And, and there's no focus on the love that needs to be displayed, even in the questioning. Yeah. And, and so this is something that we're wanting to focus more, far more attention on. Mm. And we're becoming a lot firmer about it as well. And most people are very challenged. Like every time we draw the line in with love and say, no, that, that, that what you just did there is not loving and we're not going to engage you unless you learn that lesson of love anymore. And they get up in arms and say, how dare they do that and carry on and carry on. And all we're trying to do is demonstrate to people, no, this is a principle of love that you don't want to get. Yeah. And until you get it, we don't want to share any more with you until you get that principle. Because if you don't get that principle, there's nothing more we can share mm -hmm. with you about love. And if we ignore principles of love pertaining to ourselves or to others, or even a person's treatment of themselves in favour of information, yes. we miss the point ourselves. Correct. We're not demonstrating what we're teaching either. Mm -hmm. We're not living that way. Yes. Yeah. So, you know, people should be able to recognise that already we've been doing this for over 12 months now. And as a result, a lot of people who were listening to us no longer do mm -hmm. because all they wanted was their addictions met. All yeah. they wanted was the feeding of constant information without their having to be confronted with their own unloving state. And it's time that people who have listened to this truth now for many years, particularly those people, so we're not talking about those of you who are new, just listening for the first time or whatever, but we're talking about people who've been listening for many, many years. It's time that you learnt that love is the main reason why we're doing this. Yes. And love is the only progression that you can engage. There is no such thing as metaphysical spiritual progression, actually. Yeah. There is only progression in love which will bring all these other things to you. And unless you're dedicated to learning about love and all of its aspects and all and all of the and feeling through all of the unloving things within yourself, you're really it's really pointless you coming along to any seminar we present. <laughs> <laughs> and you might come along for five years, but at the end of the day it won't benefit you once one bit unless you learn this one primary truth and that is that it is all about love and growing in love yeah. and it doesn't matter how much you want to fake it there's no such thing with love about faking it till you make it you're either loving or you're not yes <laughs> and if you're not look through the reasons why look at how the soul functions and release the reasons why you're unloving so that you can get into that state where you want to love yes rather than just deny that and then want information and be a leech for information that does not benefit you unless you love yeah 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 yeah, yeah absolutely yeah and i was just referring to the first corinthians quote again because it's not in that translation but it, it talks about the qualities of love love being patient and kind mm -hmm. but also in some translations it uses the word steadfast or um, immovable immovable mm -hmm. and and that is the truth about love yeah like if we are to love then we are going to be firm for issues of love and truth always um, and a lot of people feel that love is like a walkover and that they should be able to do well, whatever that, they want. That's addiction. That, yes. That's a walkover. <laughs> that's what they're used to having. <laughs> and while love forgives most certainly and doesn't yeah. bear a grudge, yeah. it is firm. And for it doesn't itself. bend just for the sake of somebody wanting to bend. Yeah. Doesn't yeah. bend. Yeah. Yeah. And that's how a whole spirit world 
takes form and shape Correct. And, and, and order and, because and, love doesn't bend. And all we're trying to do here is demonstrate to people like how the spirit world works, you need to get used to now. Yeah. Because if you get used to it now, it'll benefit your life now. But when you pass, you'll already be in the groove. You, you'll already know. Oh, it's all about love. All I've got to do is learn about love here. I've got to forget about my addictions, yeah. forget about my selfishness, my narcissism and all those other yeah. things. I've got to focus on love. I've got to forget about all this knowledge I want. I've got to focus first on love and all that knowledge will come to me. Yeah. If I do that, I will progress the most rapid, as, 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 most rapidly as possible yeah. as I can. But, but if I refuse to do that, I can listen and listen and listen. And like Paul said in Corinthians, it's just like a, a clashing plain, symbol. Yeah, you know? yeah. It means nothing. It's no music to anybody's ears. Yeah. Um, when you've just got a whole heap of knowledge and no love. Yeah. Uh, all it is is just a whole heap of words. A whole heap of, somebody's talking, but <laughs> I can't understand anything. I yeah. think that's what it really is. Yeah. And from God's perspective, without that kind of understanding, we really do not, uh, do not get progression towards God. No. We don't get it at all. And, and I feel many people who have come to our seminars still do not get progression towards God mm -hmm. as being progression in love. Yeah. They, they think all this knowledge that they've gained over many years of coming to seminars and so forth means that they are now progressed. No, it does not. It just means that you now know things and can regurgitate things in your mind. That's all it means. It doesn't mean you love anymore because love requires you going through a process with your soul that you need to choose to go through if you're ever going to be at one with God. And many people who have heard years and years of information have not progressed one iota in love. They are still the same people as we met them when we first met them. Yeah. And that's sad, but it's a statement of their lack of desire to love. And that's right. It's, it's a process that engages aspiration and will and yes. desire and these <coughs> very, very personal uh, qualities that are under our direct control. Yes. So while we can passively listen and regurgitate teachings, until we engage our will to want to love above addiction and above fear and above all these other things. And above our own selfishness. And above our, our comfort. Above, above our pain and our suffering. Yep. Above everything. Yep. Above our selfishness. Above our relationships. Yep. Now, <laughs> then we're not going to we're not going to go anywhere. Correct. Um, only within the boundaries of Though all of those factors that currently drive our life. Yes. Yeah. And what we see is that a lot of people give lip service to love. Mm. You know, they say they want to become more loving, but in almost every interaction they engage, they go back to their old behaviours, yeah. their old addictive behaviours. And this is not, this is an indication if, look, look, if you've heard teachings of divine truth for five years and the person who's teaching you have said, I have not seen you change in that time, you have not learned how to love in five years. Yeah. Now, you've only, there's been plenty said about love in that time, <laughs> so that means that you're resistive to loving. Mm. And what I would suggest to people in that state is to stop for a moment, about, stop trying to learn more information yeah. and focus firmly on why are they so resistive about becoming more loving. They'll find a lot more in the answer yes. to that question that will help them in their future than answering any other question. Yeah, and I feel for many of us, we're judging that state within us. And yet if we find actually the resistance to love within us, we usually encounter a lot of fear and a lot of pain. And that is the beginning of our progression. Correct. Yeah. This connection to, I don't want to love, why? Mm. And not, in, not an intellectual process, but a feeling-based process. Yeah. Then we begin our progression, don't yes. we? And, um, and most people on earth are angry about love, let's yeah. face it. They, are, they don't want to have to love under all circumstances. What they want is people to be kind to them and nice to them, and then they'll love those people. Mm. But, but that's what, a, that's what a, like I said in the first mm -hmm. century, that's what a murderer does. Yeah. He loves the people you know, who that are kind to him, him yeah. who please him, and murders the other people yeah. who don't. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? And that's not so, love. And that's not love, no. that's addiction. Yeah. That's what it's called, addiction. Yeah. And, and the reality is the majority of people believe that to be love. So just when we learn to love, we love without addiction. Mm -hmm. We love no matter what the situation. Yeah. We love no matter what's going to happen to us personally. We love no matter what is going to happen in the future. What we think is going to happen in the future usually is a better way to say it because mm -hmm. we don't know. And, and we do that consistently when we learn how to love. And, 
And what I find is most people are very angry about that. They don't want to have to love when their wife's getting raped or their child's getting beaten or, or their child's being murdered. Or, you know, they don't want to love in those situations. They feel they shouldn't have to. They feel you know, very angry about that as a concept. And in fact, when we start discussing that particular concept, that under these very difficult times you can still love, boy, there's a lot of rage and anger that comes into the discussion from people listening generally. Mm -hmm. And that demonstrates how much opposition there is in their own hearts to actually loving the way God loves. Yeah. And that's why they haven't progressed. Yeah. That's why there's been no forward movement. And that's the emotional place to start. Correct. The exploration of those feelings in a humble and sincere way. Correct. The exploration of that rage that you feel yes. as to why you're so angry about the concept that, what, I've got to love even when somebody hurts me? Yes. 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 Yeah. From God's How perspective. How does that make you yes. feel? Yes. How does yeah. that make you feel? Yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. I've got to love even though somebody caused my pain? Yes. Yeah. I've got to love even though they did it all the time? Yes. Mm -hmm. Like, yes, this is the thing that you will learn in time. You will learn how to love that way. Yeah. But, but you need to have a desire to love that way that gets you through all of these emotions that you feel at the beginning. Yeah. And most people don't have a desire to go through those emotions. They don't want to come face to face mm -hmm. with the way they really are or what they really believe about love. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, we've often said that the core of this path is repentance and forgiveness. I mean, really, that's, how we, that's what we're doing when we're dealing with our emotions. Mm -hmm. And uh, to explore why we don't want to repent or why we don't want to forgive is really important work. Yes, um, extremely important yeah. because it's all about love. We're, like We repent for actions where we've taken to harm others. That's about loving other people and loving ourselves and loving God and loving God's laws. You know, and forgiving other people when they've done things that harm us. That's all about owning our own feelings, owning our own emotions, which is an act of love. Yes. You know, so it's all active acts of love that we're trying to encourage people to engage. Yeah. And most people don't, who come along to the session don't really understand that yet. They still think it's about information. Yeah. And it's not about information. Information can help you. Yeah. It can break down the barriers of untruth. Like it, it can get rid of the lies. Yeah. It can help you with that. But it can't help you deal with the resistance and the suppression in your own soul to the belief systems of love. Yeah. So th there is, unfortunately, on the planet, large numbers of, of belief systems which oppose love. Yeah. And you've got to let those belief systems go if you're ever going to love. That's the fact. Yeah, and get really real about our belief systems being emotional. I notice a lot of people are trying to approach this whole idea of emotional exploration even intellectually, mm. examining mm. what are my emotions intellectually, then trying to feel them and, and saying that they're longing for God's love when if we get really real with ourselves from an emotional perspective, mm. we find that a lot of the chatter that goes on, our, in, on in our head is actually avoiding what's really there. Correct. And um, it's that work, that, that connection with what's really there, yes. that begins our progression. Yes. Yeah. And this is where um, if everyone understood that love is the progression, mm -hmm. like, like it is the most important subject you can discuss. And what I find quite interesting in many of our seminars is that sometimes we open questions to the audience. And as you know, the majority of questions asked are not about love. They're just not about love. And yet we keep saying to people, look, love is the most important thing you can learn about. So why aren't you asking questions about love? Yeah. What does love look like? What does it feel like? What is it, yeah. what, you what know, would love, do what would love would do in this situation? Yeah. What would love do in that situation? You know, these are questions that you can ask yourself about love mm -hmm. that will help you see what you do and compare what you do with what love would do yeah. or purified love would do in that situation. And, and these are the more important questions. And it's interesting with regard to um, the FAQ things that we do, very few questions are received about love, about describing it, understanding it. Now, of course, we respond to the questions that people have. Yeah. So many of the times what we're doing is we're responding to the questions you actually have. Mm -hmm. But why aren't most of the questions that you actually have about love? Mm -hmm. That's a good question. We yeah. need to ask ourselves that question. Or and that, even the barriers to love. Well, that's right. Yeah. But about love or the barriers yeah. to love yeah. would be the way to go. And the main reason why is because the majority of us do not want to do it. Mm. That, that's the sad fact. Yeah. And pr the world at the moment is proof of that sad fact. Yeah. 
Because if the majority of us wanted to love, the world would be a very different place than it currently is. Right? So, so the world is proof that the majority of us actually at this stage have not even yet developed a desire to love, mm. let alone want to know how to do it. Yeah. And so what I would suggest to people is that allow yourselves to develop a desire to love mm -hmm. and then start asking your questions about how you're going to achieve that. Then you will make some sincere progress in your life. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Very good discussion about progression, which is the, one of the core themes of this chapter. Mm.